church hurt. We've all experienced it at one time or another. You, me, the pastor, our children, our ancestors. When we talk about church hurt, we talk about how someone else hurt me that's either in the same church I attend, a person that goes to church, or it can happen right here in the church. Join us as we talk about church hurt. Have you experienced church hurt? Yes. Hurt. Yes. Oh my God, yes, yes. 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 Amen. Yes. Welcome back to Freedom in the Word. We have missed y'all. We're coming off of depression and we pray that you have enjoyed that series with Minister David Roundtree. I am Minister Sherry Knotts. Hi, Ebenezer. I'm Minister Lonnie Harris. And today we want to talk with you about church hurt. Mm, church hurt. Church hurt. That term has been thrown around. It's been experienced. Different people have different takes on it. And as many of the members here with Ebenezer congregation have stated that they certainly have experienced church hurt in one shape, form or another at one particular time or another. So it's definitely uh, still relevant. And it's a topic I believe that needs to be addressed uh, that hopefully the body of Christ can heal and continue to go forward. And I don't think that you can exhaust it all ever, like 100%. But we, we found and understand church hurt to be not the building, not the church itself, the institution itself, but a person, set of people that has said or done something offensive to a person. Mm -hmm. And that's what we coin church hurt. Um, church hurt, it, it, it's a pain that certainly we experience. And it could be physical, but it's more emotional, more mental. Yeah. And it, I think it goes to the fact of how could that person, yeah. my church member, or how could that preacher, or how could that Sunday school teacher say that to me or do that to me? But the thing that we have to realize is we're dealing with people. Correct. We're dealing, no, we're made in God's image. That is true. And I don't like to say that people are flawed, but we don't have the nature of Christ all the time. Right. So in just your natural way of living, when you're trying to do the straight and narrow, somebody's going to be offended. Yeah. Somebody's going to be hurt in the church. Yeah. So when we talk about the church, we want to identify what that looks like. Well, that could look like um, when I speak to you, you don't speak to me. You could roll your eyes at me. <laughs> you could start gossiping about that person. You then, then people start branching off into cliques. They don't, they don't support certain functions if certain people are heading it up or going to be heavy-handed in the planning. Mm -hmm. Or it could also present as someone moving their church memberships. That, that's, that's pretty brutal. Yeah. But that could also be a form of church hurt, how it's manifesting in the life of that believer. Right. Minister Sarah, I think that uh, the body of Christ, I think the church is what I believe we call a hospital. Mm -hmm. And it should be a place that because we've been hurt mm -hmm. outside of the church, mm -hmm. Um, and because we've dealt with sin and our own internal and external issues mm -hmm. away from the body of Christ, mm -hmm. it should be a place that we come together and experience the supernatural healing through the power of God. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, um, when a believer comes to the body of Christ mm -hmm. or enters into the physical building or the church mm -hmm. and they experience more hurt, mm -hmm. then I think that's what that's really damaging and that's really um, detrimental mm -hmm to the relationship between that person and the church as well as that person in Christ. Okay, so with that, so can can we think of some examples of said hurt? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, we've all experienced church hurt. We can speak whether from our experience, yes. our individual experience, yes. or we can speak from just what we've seen uh, in others as well. I mean, when you're talking about, um, at, I think one of the things that you talked about when you have, when you, when, when churches form cliques or groups and they begin to ostracize others, 
and leave others on the outside because you don't look like us. You mm. don't dress like mm. us. You don't live where we live. You don't Come worship on. the way that we worship. You don't pray the way that we pray. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and ultimately what that looks like is a group on one side yeah. and this one individual or a smaller group on the other side. And uh, that can be hurtful and cause damage uh, in the body of Christ. Because I'm not accepted. Absolutely. Or I'm not experiencing acceptance in the very place that I should be accepted, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. the Bible says, come as you are, mm -hmm. right? And it doesn't expound on that. So I know for me, a long time ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a, little, a simple thing, but it's the little things. Uh, my children were small, and evidently this particular person didn't know that I actually took time to raise my children. <laughs> I, I taught them to respect things, mm -hmm. right? And my daughter wanted to look in the hymnal. She loved words. She always, even though she was, you know, small, she didn't, couldn't read, but she liked looking at words. And so it kept her quiet in church. So, and we got brand new hymnals, and I let her look at it. And this older gentleman said, now don't you let her tell that him." And I, I had to stop myself because I really wanted to tell him some real nice church words. Um, because, you, you know, I felt like, okay, you're painting me by the hood. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually take time to raise my children. But that goes with um, stigma mm -hmm. that should be left outside of the church yeah. Yeah. because we're all here bleeding or healing through or experiencing our own need of the doctor that heals inside this hospital that we call the church. Yeah. Minister Sherry, words are powerful. Yes. They're powerful tools yes. that are helpful or they are hurtful. Mm -hmm. And so ultimately, as the body of Christ, we should, uh, our words, the Bible tells us our words should be mm -hmm. seasoned with grace. Salt. And so we should really be prayerful mm -hmm. how we speak with one another, how we interact with one another, because ultimately the adversary always oh. wants oh. to put a foothold and put a bar mm -hmm. between yes. members, between in marriages, in relationships, his supreme tactic from the beginning of the foundation of the word is to divide and conquer. Yeah. And he, we can ultimately use our words uh, to injure and when they should be to build up, to encourage, and to inspire. And to love, to show love. Absolutely. Right? Because we may not have the solution, we may not have the answer, the touch, the money, or whatever someone else needs. But if you have an encouraging word, you know, hold on, my brother, my sister, I'm going to pray for you. Everything's going to be okay. Instead of saying, well, how'd you get into that? <laughs> and what were you doing? You know, those types of things, they cause church hurt as well. Yeah. So what are some other ways that church hurt really displays itself? Any, any other ways that you can think or examples? I would say just being very spiteful. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if it's, if it's church summit, as we call it here, we don't call it church conference we call it church summit and it's a vote for something that you know everybody else is on board but here you come you're gonna be the nay you know for no reason at all it could be that way or it could be um tearing down the ministry itself mm -hmm. you know and then just being a person that's going around and around and around spreading things that aren't so correct there was also another church i wasn't a member there but this one church they put letters on people's cars about the pastor and of course it wasn't true and there was one good-hearted uh member who saw the letters and she and her son went and got all the letters off the cars so that the damage that was meant yeah. did not come through. Yeah. Yeah. So um, any closing thoughts for this particular segment? For this particular segment, no, I think my closing thoughts are just really as the body of Christ, as believers, when we're dealing with church hurt, I think that um, we should really take other thoughts and feelings into consideration um, as we, uh, one another mm -hmm. because we are a body of believers and we don't want to intentionally hurt one another if you go and read uh for those at home first corinthians 12 verses 14 through 26 it talks about having unity in the body mm -hmm. and in having unity in the body we want to make sure that um we have the same care for right. each particular part each particular piece right. as god would have it fit right. you might function as the hand <laughs> i might function as the foot and we can't function as a body if one of those or both of them are gone. We need each other. Yeah. So join us next time. We do have one more segment on church hurt. And we're going to discuss a few more things with church hurt. And we pray that our teachings have helped you. We encourage you to like, comment, and share. And I'm, I'm begging you to please comment 
either on <laughs> Facebook or YouTube because we want to make sure that we're being helpful to you. Yeah. We want to make sure that it's feeding you or it's encouraging you or changing your mindset, yeah. helping you to help others. In the meantime, I am Minister Sherry Knotts. I'm Minister Lonnie Harris. And we'll be talking to you soon. God bless you.